Hey everybody and welcome back. Thank you for tuning into this video today. Um, it, like I said in my last video, in my introductory video today in this video, I want to go over creating a third person template and, and it, um, uh, setting up the input subsystem function from scratch. We're not necessarily from scratch, but at least redoing it in the way that the game animation sample project has in their project, just so we can kind of get the look at how it's actually working and performing. Uh, a lot of my videos are gonna be as short and simple as possible that I can make them, just because I know that y'all don't wanna watch, you know, a 30 minute to an hour long video explaining this. So, and most of you, if you are here, whether you're new or, you know, you're a veteran and stuff like that, you know, this should be hopefully simple to follow along. I will say if you are new, especially like new like me, uh, or maybe a bit newer, I would say that kind of the prerequisite to uh, the upcoming videos would be hopefully having an understanding of how the Unreal Engine viewport works and, you know, how the character blueprint works to a certain degree, um, booleans, variable, like, and other variables like floats, stuff like that, you know, the basic gist, but... Um, and, but to cut that short, uh, we're going to go ahead and get into the project so I can show y'all the first demonstration of the game animation sample project from scratch. So as you can see, I already have my Unreal project browser up and ready to go. And what I am going to do is click on the third person template, um, target platform, desktop, where you are going to keep it blueprint, the quality preset. You can set it to scalable. I'm just going to keep it at maximum by default. Not, I don't really care about that. Um, starter content we're going to leave alone, ray tracing we're going to leave it alone, we really don't need that kind of stuff. Um, and then for the project, what I will be calling it is the GASP Tutorial, just like that. So let's see, so now we got that, let's go ahead and hit the create button and wait on that. Alright, cool, cool, now we are in, it is loaded now, let's go ahead and see, just make sure everything works fine, yep. All right, perfect. So now that we are in here, what we're gonna do first is just kind of take a look at the viewport real quick. I am gonna dock that in the layout uh, for the content browser. So as you can see within our third person template that we do have characters, level prototyping, and third person. Uh, I will be going back and forth between these just because, um, well, pretty much later, I would be going through this uh, just because of animations, but for a lot of the time that we're going to be spending, it's going to be spent within the blueprints and the input because we will be making a lot of different mappings and working heavily in our blueprint. So, so now, as far as that, let's go ahead and open up the third person blueprint and I'm going to dock it here. So as you can see, we come in with the default third person template blueprint. And the first thing I am going to do is I am going to create the uh, the event possessed that they have for the player controller in the game animation sample project. So now, uh, as you can see here in the input mapping actions, we have a get controller that is then being cast to the player controller, and that's what allows us to control our character or our, at least our playable character. And then, you know, we check here to see if it's valid. Uh, if it's not, we don't do anything. But if it is, then we grab our mapping context that we have set for our input actions and get put into the input local player subsystem. So then we can call it in the blueprint. So what I am going to do is I'm going to go ahead and disconnect that, move that over here. And what I'm going to do is click off into an empty space and search for event possessed. So this is what they have it. It's a server only event that happens. So it has the only authority there. Um, but basically it, it, from my understanding of event possessed, I've tried looking into it, but it seems like we do possess whatever we're casting to. So it's almost like the Git controller just right off of this. So hopefully from my simple explanation that is right if there is a veteran watching this video i'm hoping that in the comments that you can correct me if i'm wrong but as far as i'm aware of in simple terms that when we use the event possessed that whatever we're casting to and the object placed into here we will basically act as the git controller and then control our player character so 
Uh, so to continue forward then, what I am going to do is I am going to get rid of this since this is our controller or our Git controller basically in the event. And I'm going to pass that here so that way we have it hooked up like that. So in the game animation sample project, they do have it set up in functions and I am going to be doing that to kind of follow along and also two functions do look nicer. It makes, you know, the blueprint cleaner and stuff like that. So I am going to click in here and I'm going to right click and collapse to function. There we go. Got a function, move that over there. And I'm going to rename it to set up in eight. There we go. Cool. Got that. And let me get rid of that comment because what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically shift that comment to in here. So once you have this set up and ready to go, I'm going to double click in there for a minute just because there is a couple other things that I want to add that kind of quality of life stuff, right? So, uh, I already have this laid out. I have a few monitors laid out. So a lot of the stuff, the comment bubbles, uh, there will be a lot of comment bubbles that I do make in the game animation sample project because this is stuff that I think everybody should do is commenting your code it's like very meticulously or maybe not as meticulous, but as much as possible. So that way the other people that do look at your code and review your code understand what's going on. Uh, you know, for me, it's kind of a, a little bit of a peeve when I don't see people having comments on their code and they try their best to explain it. And I'm still kind of like, uh. so I am going to copy my comment node from my other screen and I am going to paste it in here for you all to see what's going on. So as you can see, this function sets up the character controller to use the enhanced input system, which requires a mapping context to be added upon possession. So like I was saying, when we do, when we begin play, the event possessed fires off and we basically get control of our character. So what I am going to do to move on from that is I am going to undo these because after seeing them in the game animation sample project, I do kind of like how they've inputted it where we're getting the validity first rather than later in the in the the line or in the row that we're calling these nodes so what we are going to do is move that over a little bit and we are going to set the object here into input because this is basically kind of like how we get the controller um, and cast it to the event possessed we are also going to do the same thing for the cast to player character. So we're going to have the object node or the object input thought be fired into the validity node to check how, that it's valid and also into our player character. So that way we have it nice and tidy. And then now we are going to do the rest of it. But one thing I do want to add, and this is something that I like to always add, is the set input mode game only. So when I was doing a Pong project, um, I believe it was by Unreal University that had talked about this node where basically once you possess, your character is possessed when you do the simulate or the play button, it will automatically possess your character so that way you do not have to click on the screen to possess your character. It just does it automatically for you. So then you can just right away begin play testing. So that's just a bit of a quality of life feature that I like to implement myself. You don't have to necessarily do that, but I love it as it's just a quick back and forth. So now that we got that, just like how the input action system was before, we are going to then get the as player controller and put it there and put it there. And then what we are also going to do is just move that over a little bit. So the comment bubble, get that. And we're going to cast there, and then we are going to set the target. So there we go. So now we do have the setup input basically completed. This is all that we're doing here, and nothing more needs to be done. So we are going to go ahead and compile and save. So just to show you what this does, let's go back into the event graph. So again, we have the event possessed, which would basically kind of act like this if we had this tied to here, except we just... it 
kind of does it for us anyway, so it frees up the begin play variable, right? So now after setting that up, we can go in just to test and see I am already controlling my character and my character can move around, jump, and we got that squared. So cool. So there we go. Part one of the gas project from scratch is done. And so let's see, we are at the 10 minute mark. So I guess what I'm going to do is stop it here for the first video. Um, like I said, I'm going to try to keep these videos short and sweet just because there's a lot of things that are going to be happening in this tutorial series that again, I don't want to be pressing up to half hour, one hour marks. So uh, we are going to stop it here now that we got that set up and the next video I will be showing how to create the UI widget that you saw in the introductory video that will be used for our debugging because there's going to be a lot of stuff that we go through that I'm going to try my best to explain and that debugging widget will help show what exactly is going on. So that will be in the next video and we will take some stuff uh, to get sample data to show you how the debugging will be working so you know if you like this video and wish to further continue down this route with me that would be awesome and i can't wait to see you in the next video so other than that guys y'all take care and i will see y'all next video bye